Now we're going to take a look at face painting. It's a very popular offering and one you can really sell, and one that keeps the crowd busy for hours. You'll need something to carry your supplies in and keep them in place because loose face paints tend to come open and make things terribly messy. My paints and tattoos are each packed in a briefcase, ready to go at any time. These are sturdy Anvil brand musicians briefcases, bought from a big music store. They cost a lot, but they're indestructible, and I like that. eBay has been showing some hard shell camera cases filled with foam for a lot less. I've even seen some at Home Depot. And what's in my case? Of course, the mirror. The kids are going to want to see their faces. I have some uh, sponges to paint with, and of course brushes, and my paints. These are uh, Cryolan Aquacolor. Uh, you may like some other kind. The liquid kind is good for little bitty tiny brushwork, but that's what uh, I've got. I also carry my own supply of cups, because you never can count on what you're going to find. You'll want a table. A card table will do. Whatever you get, be sure it's fairly strong, because for some reason, the waiting kids lean on it and push it fairly hard. You can tell them to back off, but pretty soon someone will be leaning again. You'll want a dark tablecloth, large enough to cover the table and drape about a foot over the edge. You need it because you will get paint dripped and spilled, staining your table, and you just don't want to look like a complete slob. You'll be very glad it's there when a cup of water gets spilled and absorbed rather than running onto your lap. Save some money and do it yourself. Just get some dark cloth from a fabric store. They sell lots of good designs at Halloween time and sew an edge on it. I also like to carry my own chairs. The tattoos are in a separate case. They need to be kept away from water, including wet face paints and brushes. All I need beside this to paint faces is a supply of water. And I suggest that you take your own, because it's tough getting to a picnic, only to find that the only liquids available are beer and soda, and you have to drain the cooler of melted ice to get any water. You'll also have to change your face painting water when it becomes very muddy and disgusting. Never use any paints but those specifically formulated for faces. If they're labeled face paints or theatrical makeup, that's fine. Just never be tempted, as I saw on a few websites researching this section, don't be tempted to use plain art paint like tempera or watercolor because those paints aren't designed to be applied to skin. And don't be tempted to formulate your own. I did find recipes all over the web for homemade face paints, usually involving food coloring, cornstarch, and cold cream. They don't stick well, they stain skin, and they never really dry. Here's a question to start you thinking. What kind of painting skill do you have? And I'm sure you already know the answer to that. Some people are pretty good drafts people. They can do little bitty detailed pictures with modest effort. Others aren't. If you're lucky enough to be good with the brush, you're ahead. But anybody can develop a repertoire of designs that look reasonably like what they're supposed to be. Get to know what your skills are and play to your strengths. For painters who prefer tiny, carefully drawn designs, a wet style face paint may be best. It can be applied with a short, square bristled brush. You can use it sideways for fine detail. Add sponges, even fingertips to your drawing tools, and you can achieve very dramatic effects. Settle on a list of designs, some little pictures, some old face designs, and display it as a menu when you work. That'll keep most of the requests within the boundaries of what you know you can do best. Whatever you do, don't be tempted to put out the store-bought face painting books with lovely color photos for customers to view. Otherwise, they'll be asking for a duplicate of one of the most difficult, elaborate, perfectly airbrushed faces. And when they compare your efforts to the photos, it'll always be unfavorable to you. Don't even buy those things. Here's my menu. If someone asks for something different, you might decide to say, I've never done that before, but I'll give it a try. 
make the execution of each work of art into an entertainment event, both for the subject and for the crowd. All right, well, what, sh what should I make you? A mouse? A blue mouse? All right, you ever seen a blue mouse? Last time I saw one, I'd had a little too much clown juice. And you might as well make it jolly. Oh, uh, by the way, do you have mice at home? Oh, I was hoping to start some gossip. Right away. And make a few jokes. This washes off with soap and water in three weeks. Here we go. Now close your eyes and keep them closed, okay? All right, here we go. We're going to start with some tiger orange. Now give you, close your eyes. Keep them closed, please. I'll let you know when you can open them. Here we go. We're going to put this sponge and get some orange, a good coat of paint all over you. And now, a tiger nose. You can open your eyes now. Big old nose like that. And now, some stripes. I'm going to finger paint. Growl, 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 growl. Let me get a little more black. Roof, growl, growl. All the way around, just like that. Now some yellow. Growl, growl. Are you feeling maybe more savage and dangerous already? I think so. You're looking pretty darn good there. Here we go. Roof. Now some white. We're going to take our little brush and make some big, mean, awful tiger teeth. A big old tiger frown. And now uh, here you go. Look in the mirror. Give me a big old growl. All right, now go scare some girls, okay? Here's my vampire, which is really a lot more entertainment than painting. We'll have a big old vampire frown and green cheeks. Really disgusting green cheeks. There we go. Now let's take our white and make two big, long vampire teeth. There we go, just like that. And to really make a vampire, we got to have... Oh, you just bit somebody. There's some blood dribbling all the way halfway down your neck. Hey, that's a heck of a vampire there. He wants to be a skeleton. Let's make him a skeleton. Close your eyes. Keep him closed now, please. And we will give you a coat of white paint. Gee, it's just like painting a house. There we go. little dead skeleton white all over, including our nose. And now, keep your eyes closed. We are going to give you two bony skeleton dark eye sockets just like that. There you go. And let's even that up a little bit. That's right. I'll tell you when you can open your eyes. Great. Now, if you don't squint, this won't look bad, and they won't think I'm a terrible face painter. And now, let us get some hollow you can open up your eyes now some hollow cheeks just like that let's shape up that skull and now we're gonna take some paint and make a skeleton mouth and some there we go some teeth and some cracks in the skull hey that looks pretty good there oh don't forget that nose don't forget that nose that's not there Boy, you look scary. Some more cracks, I think. That's right. Let's put uh, let's put one over here. That is the most frightening thing. What are we going to have now? Oh, this is one of my favorite things. I do very good flowers. Right there. That cheek? This side or that? That one. Okay. Well, this is going to be very, very nice. We're going to make some some flower petals here you just make like two X's and fill that out with a couple of more petals like that and then let's get some yellow and make a beautiful yellow middle and some green and make a green stem just like that there you go didn't take too long you weren't scared were you no I didn't think so this is one of my favorite things. Here's an American flag face for you. you. You've got the white right over here and some red stripes. What color is the flag? Do you know? We've got red and white and what is it? Blue. That's right. There's some stripes there. And over on this side, we're going to put our blue. There you go. And we're going to fill it right in. 
They have to hold still, because if you don't hold still, I'm going to have squiggles all over your face, and they won't know what I mean. There we go. And then the best part is a big white star right here in the middle. And that's kind of tough to make. Let's get that filled in and straightened up and looking a little bit more like a proper star for a flag. There we go. Da 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 da. You look very patriotic. You might tell them a story while you paint about a little girl or boy who was magically transformed into a whatever you're painting. Have them plant their hand on your table and that'll keep both their hand and their arm still and even usually their face. You're going to have to learn to say no, just like you did with the issue of tiny kids and balloons. Very small children can become really frightened by uh, a, a stranger coming at them with a pointy brush. It sometimes helps to suggest just putting a little figure on their hand. It's less threatening. If the kid doesn't want his face painted and he's wiggling and squirming to get away, use that line about maybe next year and point out that you can't do anything on a moving surface. Temporary tattoos are very popular, but they can be expensive. If you look and shop carefully, you can get some brands for much better prices than others. Here's a comparison. Choose colorful, bold styles. I don't get many takers for the tiny ones that are supposed to run around your fingers. Heed the instructions when applying tattoos. You'll have the best success if you only apply water to the backside. Don't dip the whole thing in water. A separate large cup of clean water should be reserved for applying tattoos. Many children ask you to apply them to their upper arm, where real tattoos are often done. And I'll put them there if they really want, but I usually suggest putting them lower on the arm or even on the hand so they can be seen.